Dreddy goodness. Too bad it wasn't Stratterday. Is that even a word? I don't know. Anyway, folks, welcome to yet another edition of the cover band guy who does mediocre shit. Um, so today, it's a simple topic. It's matching your band with the right venue. Not all venues are created equally. And some venues will make you look like a bunch of dicks. Okay? So let's dive in right after these messages. No, seriously. There is such a thing as matching a band to a venue. Because there are a lot of venues out there. If you're like a hard rock band who are playing Iron Maiden covers, you're not going to go over at the local bar beater club where uh, people are coming in wearing green rubber boots and plaid jackets. Because the first thing they're going to say is, Jesus, what the fuck are they? They're not even a real band for playing that heavy metal stuff. I don't, I don't like that. I'm going on home right now, getting, getting, getting a cup of tea. Uh, so you don't want to go doing that stuff, man, because I'm going to tell you, Nan don't want to hear Iron Maiden when she goes out to the bar right after bingo, because she's probably after losing a couple of hundred bucks out of her uh, check there that the government gives her every month for a great big whopping, what is it, like 400 bucks a month? I don't even fucking know. But anyway, um, you got to match your band with the venue. So for instance, if you're an original band, you need to stick to like-minded venues. We got some of them in the city. Uh, it seems to work for some venues and not so much for others. Uh, you can tell because the name changes every three or four weeks of the venue because somebody else bought it out. Uh, and some venues go strong by doing it and uh, they keep giving those guys who basically uh, keep their morals and play their own music and not get paid which is unfortunate because they're working just as hard as anybody else crafting what they're doing but you're also not going to go over in their clubs if you're a cover band and we've been through that Mr. Perry uh, when we played a gig a couple of years ago down at uh, and I hate doing this but I'm going to mention the club name it's the Rock House and the reason I mention this is because Rock House is a great venue don't get me wrong it's a beautiful club, it's spacious, but it's centric towards original music. We played a gig um, and we did our covers, we opened up for a tribute band, and nobody cared because we were the wrong band for that club, but they wanted to keep somewhat a theme going there. So the staff weren't impressed with it and seemed not to care. Sound guy was indifferent. It was just, yeah. It's harder for the original guys though, because at least like if you haul out a song like Summer '69, someone's gonna like it no matter where you're playing. Whereas if you're hauling out your own tune in the middle of a bar where people are there and are ready to scuff the friggin' night away, they're probably gonna look at it and go, "But I never heard that before." So they're not gonna dance to it. And which is on, it doesn't even matter how catchy it is. It could be the most danceable song in the world. If they didn't hear it on K-Rock, they're not dance to it, or Oz FM, or Hits, or that other station that nobody listens to. Like, it's, uh, it's really hard. So you have to put your band in the right venue. So if you're a tribute band, you want to play in a venue that you're probably, even though you're doing covers, you're going to fit more in line with the guys that are doing the originals. You'll see a lot of tribute bands bang it out at the Rock House. You'll see um, a lot of tribute bands also probably play a few little festivals and areas like that and places where they play for the door. Whereas if you're a cover band, you're going to play and, you know, God rest his soul, uh, even though he's not dead, uh, Tolses. When we played there, you're not going to put a Chili Peppers tribute band on the stage there and expect good things crowd that are going over there, they want to dance, they want to hear what they're used to because they're creatures of habit. And that's as far as that, that goes. So when you call a club, uh, you should only keep that in mind. Am I playing in the right place? Because you don't want to put your band in a situation where you have a really bad gig and somebody goes by, you know, I went out to uh, see my buddy's original band play and they had a cover band open up for her. That was no good. Then your band sort of gets like a, a little bit of a, you know, and news travels, man. Like, and it only takes one person to start that kind of reputable bullshit. So match yourself with your venue. If you're playing heavy metal, there's that whole scene down there. Uh, I don't even know the name of the bars down there anymore. 
Um, but there's holes, Holdsworth Square, I believe. I, I don't know, there's like three bars right together there. We used to play a place called The Stores from when I was a young fella. And that's what we played, hard rock and metal. That's, that's screamo, whatever. That's what went over there in the levee and those bars. But you weren't going to go there and play Billy Joel covers, put it that way. So be smart about it, and because not all gigs, like people say, oh, a gig is a gig. No, it's not. Not if depends what you're trying to do. If you're trying to make a reputation for your band, you need to play in places where you can make that reputation and make it a positive reputation. Uh, you don't need negativity. There's enough negativity in the world. You don't need it centered around your band. So just uh, keep that in mind when you're making that phone call or you're walking into that bar. Is this the right bar for me and my band to thrive and try to build a following in? Uh, it's, it's simple, you know. Or if you're not even sure, ask whoever you're talking to and management, owners, whoever's booking, uh, what kind of entertainment are you looking for? You know, do you want original music played here? Do you want covers? Do people dance? Whatever. It doesn't hurt because then at least you can avoid a bad situation. Um, I played over in Islington like back in, I think it was like 19 friggin' 90. And my buddies were all there. It was original bands and hard rock bands. And after the first band played, the same woman came up to the singer of my buddy's band and said, do you guys play any country and western? Actually, she came up and said, hey, buddies, do you guys play any country and western? Uh, and they didn't. So they didn't go over well. People just stared at them. And then the second band went up and started playing hard rock covers. They were doing Crazy Train, shit like that. And I thought that was like the most awesome thing I'd ever seen because I was a metal fan. Like they did Seek and Destroy by Metallica and the guitar player nailed it. Like, you know, it was awesome. But people started walking out and one guy actually threatened one of the other bands that got up. You got to avoid that because that was a cover band kind of situation. So... You can avoid that by just asking simple questions. What are you looking for? And if you do get yourself into a situation with a bunch of bands and you're playing one of those clubs, you need, because we talked about this in a video with your promotion, you need to make it clear that this is a special event and it's not the same thing that happens every weekend. It's completely different. So ask the questions, do the research, make a plan. That's it for me, guys, for this one. So remember... Keep your undercover bands spayed and neutered. Cheers.